In this module, we want to look at average acceleration again and look at some examples using the motion diagrams. So previously we talked about the trajectory and then the displacement and average velocity, which uh, tells us how the displacement is changing with time, and then the average acceleration, which is telling us how the velocity is changing in time. So let's consider a uh, a motion diagram that looks particularly simple. We start out at one point, it's going to be one dimensional. At a time later it ad it advances a little bit and it's speeding up so a little time later it's even further and then further again and then it goes about the same amount Then it starts slowing down not quite getting as far and comes to rest. So these are the my motion diagram, the positions of my particle here as a function of time. And so I can draw uh, position vectors uh, simply between all of these points. They go in a line. I won't do that right away because the next thing I want to do is draw my uh, average velocity vectors, which point in the same direction as my position vectors, which go between uh, each point of the motion diagram. And so I end up overriding my displacement vectors again. And so again, the, the average velocity vectors point in the same direction. They have different units because they're divided by the time interval between each position, but they point along the direction of the displacement. Now, what I want to look at is what do the uh, the average accelerations look like uh, in this region. And so th to do that, we want to, to take the difference between two successive velocities, some final velocity minus an initial velocity over some time interval. And so let's look at this uh, uh, first part here. So here we'll look at um, the, the second velocity, which is a vector about that long. And we want to subtract from it the first velocity vector. So to subtract from it, I add to that vector a uh, a vector of the length of this of this first vector in the opposite direction. And so now the difference between them is I go from the tail of one to the head of the other. And so my acceleration vector is going to be pointing in that direction. Now again, um, if this is my average acceleration vector, this right here is my difference in my velocity vector. You can't compare them directly as the same length because they have different units, but they're, they vary simply by the difference of the scalar, this delta t. But the average velocity vector uh, points in the same direction as the difference in the velocity vectors. Okay, so I can say that in this region where these two uh, th these two velocity vectors are, there is an average, average acceleration of the particle that points in that direction. If we call this, say, the positive x direction, the acceleration is in the positive x direction. Okay, so now let's go to the next two velocity vectors and do the same thing. So I start with uh, the initial uh, velocity vector not the initial, the, the second velocity vector, which is a, a vector that's longer, it points in the positive x direction. I want to subtract from it the, uh, the, uh, this velocity vector. So to subtract, I add a uh, velocity vector in the opposite direction. And then the result, I'll just go in orange here, is goes from the tail of one to the head of the other. 
and so it points in that direction, and this is now the direction of my average velocity. So in the region of these two velocity vectors, we have an acceleration in that direction. Okay, now let's take the next two. Now the next two, that's, that's uh, these two here, these are uh, about the same length. So let's say they are the same length. So if this is my second velocity vector, I add to it the negative of the first velocity vector, and the result is zero. They cancel each other out. So there is, in fact, a zero. Excel, I just represent that by a dot. The, there is no acceleration, uh, average acceleration in this region. So now let's go to the, the next two velocity vectors. That's uh, here, well, here. And so I take the first velocity vector. I, again, I'm sorry, I take the, the, the second velocity vector here. It's pointing in, in that direction. We want the second minus the first. I add to it the negative of the uh, uh, initial velocity vector. The result goes from the tail of the first to the head of the second, and so it points in that direction. So now the acceleration is in the negative x direction, and now we can do the same for the final two uh, velocity vectors. The final one is, is uh, short, points in that direction, and then I add to it the opposite of the uh, the the other velocity vector, and then the result goes from the tail of of the uh, of of the first to the head of the second, just in in adding the vectors, and so I have now an acceleration that also points in the negative x direction. So here are the the five average accelerations for my motion diagram. And in each case, I take successive velocities, take the difference between them, and the difference then gives me the direction of the acceleration vector, or in this case, the, uh, the zero acceleration. And then I, I put the acceleration arrow at the point between the two velocity vectors to, to tell me that this is the average acceleration in this region. And so here I have a motion diagram with the individual uh, positions of the uh, particle in successive time periods, the velocity vectors that go between them, and then the average velocities between the average accelerations between successive uh, velocity vectors. Okay, let's look at um, uh, another example. This will be a, a short example. Let's say I have three positions. It starts at this point, um, goes to this point, and then comes back here, where the distance between the points are the same. So I would have, here's one velocity vector I'll call v1. Here's the second velocity vector, which I'll call v2. And these velocities have exactly the same length. Is there an acceleration? Well, there is, because the average acceleration is, is the vector difference v2 minus v1 over some uh, difference in time. And so just because they're the same length doesn't mean that the vector difference between them is zero. And so if I take uh, v2, which looks like this, well, v1, your negative v1, is the same length as v1 in the opposite direction. So v1 would look like that. And so the difference between them is then the, the, uh, the vector difference between v2 and v1. And so the acceleration then is going to, the average acceleration, is going to be pointing in the same direction. So this has, uh, this motion diagram 
has an average acceleration that points down. And so that leads to a, a, a point that's going to come up again and again in, in this course, is consider motion in a circle. That may not be a very good circle, but consider a motion in a circle. I have a particle going around in a circle, and it's going at a constant speed. five meters per second or 20 miles per hour, it doesn't matter. It's just going around in a speed and it's going around in a circle at a constant speed forever. And the question is, does it have an acceleration? And the answer is yes, even though the magnitude of the velocity is not changing, the direction of the velocity is changing continuously. And if we look at what that, uh, how that direction is changing, we get an idea of where the acceleration is pointing. Let's look at just one arc of the circle. So if I have an arc of the circle here, and I'm going to look at uh, one point here, another point here, another point here. I have an average acceleration that looks like this, and an average acceleration that looks like that. Sorry, average velocity as first average velocity that looks like this, and then the average velocity points to the second, uh, to, to, to the final point. And so if I take the difference between those two, here's the first velocity, and then I want the uh, difference. So here's the negative of the second velocity. And there's uh, delta V, or the direction of the average acceleration. And we see that if this is an arc of the circle, the average acceleration points towards the center of the circle. So for a particle that goes around in a circle at constant speed, it sees an acceleration everywhere that points toward the center of the circle. And so, and we can see that by uh, looking at our definition of average acceleration. And so there's a couple examples using the average acceleration with our motion diagrams.